Hey, Greg, did you get a sense throughout the whole pre-draft process that the Browns were a team really interested in you? Uh, I mean, you know, I talked to, to all 32 teams, and, you know, a lot of them told me the same thing, um, that I was a versatile player, that they, they would love to coach. But, um, you know, I kind of got that, that sense from everybody, so I wouldn't say uh, Cleveland was like, oh, that was the, the most interested team in me. And what was this night like for you? Um, you know, wait until 26 and then finally getting that call um, that I'm sure – was great to have. Yeah, the night, you know, like you said, man, it, um, you become impatient just a little bit. Um, I was expecting to go a little bit higher. So, um, you know, I was sitting there a little nervous. But, um, you know, I had my family there. Um, you know, I just put God first, um, put my family second. And, you know, everybody who was there, this is a, this is a reward for all of us. You know, the, all the hard work that they all has um, instilled in me and everything that I've done for them. So, um, you know, it was a great night. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting to Cleveland. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Jeff Shadell, you have our next question. Hey, Greg, congratulations. Um, you, you said you were getting a little nervous. I, I thought, I imagine you expected to be uh, not the fourth cornerback taken. So does that give you a little incentive to prove that the other teams probably made a mistake? Yeah, most definitely. You know, um, I, I, I still hold myself to that high standard. I still believe. Um, that I am the best corner in, in the draft. And, you know, obviously Cleveland, um, Cleveland picked me for a reason. And, you know, everything happens for a reason. So God put me in this place to go to Cleveland. Um, and, you know, I'm just ready to give it my all for Cleveland every single day. Um, and, you know, that fan base. So I just can't wait to get to Cleveland and, and get ready to work. Thanks, Jeff. Daryl Ryder, you're up. Congratulations and welcome to Cleveland. Um, now that you're a Brown, I don't know how much you were really paying attention to uh, what some other teams were doing, but uh, Cincinnati, uh, pick and chase, uh, the Ravens adding a receiver, knowing what's uh, in this division, how excited are you to go against uh, some of that competition? Yeah, you know, that's, that's something I live for. You know, um, all my life, um, you know, I put myself in positions to, to be competitive um, and to, um, you know, compete every single day. So that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to, something uh, that I'm ready to work. So um, it's definitely a great division to play in, um, and I'm excited. Thanks, Daryl. Nate Ulrich, go ahead. Hey, Greg, congratulations. How do you feel about joining a team that was you know, in the playoffs last year, uh, had a very active offseason in the defense, and has high hopes to, to take the next step. How do you feel about joining a team like this? Man, it's a, it's a blessing, honestly. Like, you know, with the pass rushers and the corners and the safeties and that defense, plus that offense that they got in Cleveland, like, it, it's a blessing to join a team like that. And I'm just honestly looking forward to whatever coach needs me to do, um, I'm willing to do it, whether that's play special teams every single snap or whether that's to start and guard the best receiver, whatever coach needs me to do, you know, I'm going to try and help. Cleveland, you know, get get to that next hump. So whatever coach needs me to do, um, I'll be willing to do. Thank you, Nate. Marla Reidenauer, you're up. Uh, yeah, congratulations and welcome to Cleveland. I just want to, you. you know, you play with a chip on your shoulder. Does that go back even before college, like even when you were younger? Uh, yes, ma'am. That, that goes back to um, probably high school days. Uh, you know, I still – Think that I was a very under recruited player going um, coming out of high school. So um, going to a school like IMG Academy that I transferred to my senior year, I mean it was crazy. I was the lowest recruit um, at IMG there, and I was the starter on the team. So like that already shown me, you know, that I can play at that level, um, and it's shown me, you know, that I am better than a lot of you know, these guys that maybe they rank above me. So um, I'm always gonna play with that chip on my shoulder, regardless. And you know, I feel like like the way I feel is like if I'm not the first pick of the draft then they, everyone made a mistake. Like, that's the type of confidence that I have. So um, yeah, I could have been picked second overall, and I still would have had a chip on my shoulder. Uh, so, you know, I'm just ready to work, um, and I'll always keep that chip on my shoulder, definitely. Do, and do you think you'll, you have a quarterback like Baker who has that too? I mean, I know you're not on the same side of the ball, but do you think you can kind of feed off each other in that regard? Oh, most definitely. You know, I love that confidence in quarterbacks. Like, I, you know, a lot of people knock them sometimes for, for stuff like that, but – you know, I think that's perfect. When you when your quarterback is that confident and that's the leader of your team, like that's only going to make everybody else confident around you. And that's something that I kind of instilled in my teammates this season too, like being being confident and always knowing you're the best. Like you, you should always think that. So 
you know, playing with a guy like Baker, uh, we'll definitely feed off of each other. And I, I, I can see that we will have a great connection out there. And just a quick one, where were you watching the draft and how many people were there? Yes, yeah, so I was at a lifetime uh, fitness out in Oak Brook. Uh, you know, I had to make sure everybody either was vac- vaccinated or had two double negatives. I ain't got no time to be getting cold right now. Uh, but it was it was around like I would say around 50 people. Um, I had some of my coaches. Um, I had some of my friends and obviously I had my family members. It was it was a great time. Everybody was there nervous. Uh, but we're definitely glad that I'm in Cleveland and not too far from home. So that's amazing. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you, Marla. Mary Kay Cabot, you have our next question. Uh, yeah, Greg, just wondering, do you, you know, do you know many of the guys yet in the secondary? Do you have any, uh, you know, any vibe yet on, on Denzel Ward and, and Greedy Williams, who I saw already welcomed you to the land? Uh, you know, John Johnson getting added. Do you kind of have a, a feel for, for what you're heading into here? No, I don't really have a feel, but I know I am heading into a very competitive room. I can tell you that. Um, you know, all those guys are studs. Starting off with Denzel Ward, you know, that's somebody that, honestly, I mirror my game after a little bit. Um, so that's a guy that I love watching. Um, and it'll definitely be great to learn, you know, from a guy like him. And a guy like Greedy, um, you know, he was a top pick as well. So um, he has a lot of he has a lot to prove this season and things like that. So, you know, I love going into rooms that are just competitive. Like, that's something that I live for. Um, you know, if I'm not being challenged every day by the guy, you know, to the right or left of me, I don't think that's the, the marking of a – uh, you know, of a, of a very good team. You know, obviously a guy like John Johnson, you know, he's a stud as well. So um, I'm definitely going into a, a secondary uh, that got a lot of swagger. Um, and, you know, I, I just can't wait to play with those guys. And where did you think you said you thought you were going to go higher? Did you, where do you think you should have gone or where do you think, where did you think you were going to go? Yeah, where I, first I'll answer where I think I should have gone. I think I should have went to Cleveland. I mean, that's where I got picked and that's where God has put me put me in that position on purpose for me to go to, to Cleveland, you know, but like I said, once again, where do I think I should have gone with my confidence that I tell you, I should have went to Jacksonville at one. I mean, I, but that's just how confident I am as a player. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of great players out here, but that's kind of how I've always held myself to like, there, I don't think there's any player better than me, um, but I don't think I'm better than any player as well. So I, I, I try to keep that same, you know, that same confidence every, every way I go. So, where I should have went is Cleveland. This is the place that, you know, that God has put me in, and this is exactly where I was supposed to fall. But where I think that I should have went is Jacksonville at one. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Tony Grossi, go ahead. Congratulations, Greg. Um, on your resume are a few missed games due to injuries. How do you, how do you process that? Have you been unlucky? Is it a problem? Uh, uh, just talk about the, the games you've had to miss because of injuries. Yeah, I think a lot of it, honestly, is unlucky. Um, I've caught a, 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 a bunch of horrible breaks, honestly, in my career. But, you know, the thing that a lot of people fail to realize is my freshman year, you know, a lot of people think I missed those eight games. That's not true at all. Um, I actually I had an ankle injury. I missed around three games. But uh, at that point in time, I, that was the four-game rule. So my coach had actually told me I was going to redshirt. So I sat the rest of that season um, on practice squad doing things like that. We had a couple guys that were nicked up in the Big Ten Championship game, so that's why I returned to that game. So, like, yeah, I definitely missed some. I definitely missed some times with injuries. I honestly think I'm just very unlucky, but you know, I don't think, especially that's that's where a lot of people come is that freshman year, and I really didn't miss that many games that year. So, um, I'm, and I'm also going 100 percent every play. Like, I don't take a play off, but um, I'll definitely be able to to fix those things going into the league. Hopefully, I, I think I should get. I think I should get uh, lucky at this point. And uh, you mentioned earlier on, uh, you'll do whatever you have to if you have to play special teams to start your career. But when you get here, do you think you'll have a starting job uh, as your goal right off the bat? I mean, yes, as, as a goal, that, that's definitely a goal of mine. You know, a goal of mine is definitely to start in the National Football League. Do I think that coach is just giving me the job? No way. Um, you know, I think I'm going to have to come in there and definitely work. Um, there's, like I said, there's a talented, talented room. I um, mean, you know, I have to go in there and prove myself every day. So, um, like I said, if I have to do and run out on every single special team to do that, that's what I have to do. Um, but, you know, I def- being a being a starter is definitely something that I want to do uh, most definitely. But at the end of the day, I got to go in there and work um, and I got to earn my stripe just like I did in college. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Back to Scott Patrick. 
Hey, Greg, I think I saw a stat that you had the lowest opponent passer rating in college football last year. How much pride do you take in that? Yes, sir. Um, you know, I take pride in that a lot. Um, you know, in our, in our secondary alone, we, we don't like guys catching the football. Like, that's something that we don't like at all. Um, and, you know, I feel like – I feel disrespected when a guy – or a quarterback comes at me multiple times in a game. Like that's how I feel. I feel disrespected. I feel like teams shouldn't try me, but that's something I definitely take pride in. Um, I don't like guys catching the football, and I feel like if I'm doing my job, stopping guys on the edge, and we then our team will have a, a great chance of winning. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. We'll go to Nate Ulrich. This will be our last question for Greg. Hey, Greg. You know, asking you about fitting into a playoff team earlier, but. You know, being from Chicago, uh, going to Northwestern, um, does it strike you that you're, you're not going to be going far from home? Uh, what does that mean for you and your family? Is that something that, that has kind of entered your, your thought process here as you kind of reflected on this pick? Yeah, I mean, that's amazing, honestly. Like, if I can stay close to home, <laughs> that's a dream. Um, I'm a huge family guy. So, you know, I, I, even at Northwestern, I had 10 to 15 people come to every single game. So now that I'm playing in a, in a city like Cleveland, that's a three hour drive from Chicago, I will have tons of family there. So that's something I'm definitely looking forward to. Um, like I said, I am a, I'm a, I am a homebody. Um, you know, my teammates are going to be able to, you know, make a drive after a Saturday game. So uh, my girlfriend's still out here. So that's going to help a lot with that. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big homebody and I can't wait to be a part of a team like Cleveland. And, and it's so close to my home. Uh, so that's also amazing. 